Well, one, one thing we talked about last time you were here was death, dying. Another you talked about how everything is given. Well, the death and the dying, that aspect of it, in a, a way of reframing it, is really dying. What is dying is dying to the doer mentality as a means to accomplish causal adjustment to the state of being without condition as the most powerful resonance we can bring to bear on any condition that is uh, causing dissonance in our experience. And so dying, uh, you know, moving from the one state to the other uh, is very challenging because it's, it, is, it is moving from the state of thinking that there's something that I need to get or want uh, to feel better mm -hmm. to the realization that everything that I require to enliven my being is always given. I just have to develop the awareness or the capacity to receive it. And so um, to me, that's the most um, important focus for me at the moment, is communicating that. Because it's one of my revelations at the moment, as we, you know, in that recent writing, The Revelation of Being, mm -hmm. is that everything I require is always given, but I'm only able to receive it once I give myself an opportunity to experientially realize it. And so we were having that talk the other night about um, we, we have to give ourselves uh, an opportunity to experientially realize this to realize the power of being because the mental body can't has no point of reference for being as a means um, a, a, ha having any value for being at all the resonance of being its only value is doing something and all the doing is about obtaining results and the results are measured on whether I feel better or not, or things are easier or not, or I get my way or not, or I'm in control or not. So these results are all about feeding the, the, the momentum coming out of the emotional signature, that emotionally imprinted signature. That, that, that discomfort within my being if I'm not aware of it, um, if I don't have enough emotional body awareness, that discomfort is always there and it's because I'm uncomfortable, I go into stories about the discomfort, whether they're stories about myself or the world or people around me, and then I enter in order to, to, to try and change my situation, I enter doings and the doings are aimed at getting what I need and want and whether I'm successful or not is determined by results. And so it's switching from that, because that's a mentality, switching from that mentality back into the, the resonance of being. And the resonance of being is, is most easily understood for me by watching a child. Because when we say the way to access being is not doing, people get mixed up with doing an activity and they go, does that mean I'm not supposed to be active, I'm just supposed to... and then they, they think it's about stillness or about silence or... but the activity, we can look at activity as a type of momentum in the world. And there's two types of activity or momentum unfolding in the world. And this is easily seen in a child. When a child is just, is young enough to be playing and just expressing itself being in the world. It's not, it's just being there as a child. It has a radiation of it uh, that, uh, that attracts us to it. We want to pick that child up, we want to cuddle that child, we mm -hmm. want to be around that sure. child. There's something wonderful about that child, it's just being there. We want part of that experience or to participate. And when the child's being like that, we're happy to bring it its food, to take care of it, to give it the love, everything that it requires is automatically given. Everyone wants to give it that. But when that child's behavior, the activity of the child transitions from expressing its being to doing something so that it can get attention,
to doing something so that it can manipulate its experience, so that it can uh, feel better about what's going on about itself, that behavior is annoying. It's like, and now take that child out of here. That child is annoying, right? And suddenly, the chi that behavior, that doing behavior to accomplish something, it's not just an expression of being, that behavior pushes all the people away that would be able to give it what it re is requires. So that is a, it's just a metaphor for the one type of activity that enables us to receive what we require and the other activity which pushes away what we require. So to, to switch from the doer which is really the, the being whose being is not valued in the world and who itself no longer values its being starts doing things to try and accomplish acknowledgement or comfort or safety or whatever. The death is to die to that way in the world, the doer, and to be reborn into the state of being. And the transition from the one to the other is not immediate, it's organic. It's a gradual journey that takes place and what makes that possible is is what we call not doing. So not doing is the activity of sort of deliberately being. I'm not being spontaneously yet because I don't even know the value of that. I don't know what that's about. So what I'm going to do is discipline myself to deliberately be for a while okay. so I can start to see the consequence of being. Right? Because unless I demonstrate to myself the consequence of being with something without condition, I'm never going to see the value of being. That being is the causal point of receiving everything I require. So that's uh, when I suggested to you that you know we do our our top ten, because everything in our life that we're struggling with, whether I'm struggling with my father, or whether I'm struggling with my job, or whether I'm struggling with my relationship or with a health issue, there's going to be three aspects to that. There's going to be a physical aspect, there's going to be a mental aspect, which is the story I'm telling, and there's going to be an emotional signature. And the not doing activity is when we access the emotional signature underlying the issue that we're dealing with. And we find out where that emotional signature, where we resonate with it in our physical body, because it'll be somewhere there. So if I'm having an issue with my father, for example, my father is a physical circumstance or a physical being that I'm having an issue with. I have a story that I tell myself, oh, he never appreciates me and he gives me a hard time, whatever my story is. But underlying there, there might be a, an emotional signature, which we say is anger. If I tune into that anger, I just bring up the image of my father, and I tune into the story I tell myself, and then I feel the anger. The anger is going to be somewhere in my in my physicality. It's going to be somewhere around. And the not doing is when I tune into that anger, and I feel it, the felt aspect of it. I let go the the image of my father. I let go the story I'm telling, and now I just tune into that felt resonance of the anger and I be with it. I be with it not to fix it, not to undo it, not to understand it, not to have it move through my chakras. I be with it in the same way that I watch a bird in a tree. When I'm watching a bird in a tree I have no, I'm not trying to do anything with the bird, I'm just allowing the bird to be there and the bird's going to do what it's going to do and I watch it. So I be with it in that same way being with it without condition. Now this being at that causal point without condition has no value to us because we, we haven't, we, we can't yet see the consequences of it and the mental body can't comprehend any value in a not doing. It can mm -hmm. only comprehend value in doing something and getting results. Being without consequence, being without condition has consequences.